comprehensive assessment is a criterion referenced assessment. It compares results against a set goal or standard. In this example, I give the students the level one assessment. You will see them being assessed on phonetic concepts and rules. This assessment can be given before beginning instruction, for benchmarking, and for progress monitoring. You can do this virtually with a group of students, a whole class, or one-to-one, -one, and the results of this assessment will help you to determine what needs to be taught, whether through instruction or through interventions. When you take an IMSE course, you receive the assessment materials that you need, uh, teacher materials as well as student materials. And this is an example of the comprehensive teacher assessment that you receive when you take the comprehensive training. Another book that we give in the comprehensive course is Phonological Awareness, Assessment Tools and Stat Strategies by Yvette Skunk. This book has the past in it, the phonological awareness skills test that you could give to students to test their phonological awareness. And we do suggest that you give this assessment to students that are in K through two or who are struggling readers getting intervention. The IMSC comprehensive assessment includes a beginning reading skills assessment, a level one assessment, level two assessment, and level three assessment. These are broken down by phonetic concepts within each section and each section in each level has a beginning, midterm, and final assessment. As you progress with your students through the concepts, you progress through the leveled assessments. Assessments are also given if you take the intermediate course. Um, your teacher materials and your student materials are in your encoding, decoding assessments like these for your third grade students and above. The example with these students in this recording is the level one initial assessment. Students should be familiar with all C through open syllable concepts and have some mastery of their sounds when they enter level one. And it's a good starting point for intervention or at the beginning of grade one. In this case, I emailed the parents of the students the necessary papers for this assessment but you can drop off to your student's house or you can mail to your students any of the papers that you need. And as a reminder, all of this information and all of the paperwork that you would need is in your assessment manual in your binder once you've taken the course. So this is in here as guidance. One thing I would suggest is virtual does take some more time. So your day one and your day two may look a little bit different each day. You might have to break it up a little bit further. Day one and day two might need to be broken down even more because your students might have a harder time doing it virtual or things might move a little bit slower while you do it virtually. I emailed the parents of my students this student assessment sound sheet on the bottom. You can write on it as a PDF before you email it to them, or you can write on it before you mail it to them or drop it off. The level assessment that you're giving them, and you can circle whether it's initial, midterm, or final. And I also included in the email this PDF of a student assessment sheet for words and sentences. Again, on the bottom, I can put the level number and I can circle whether it's initial, midterm, or final, either by writing on the PDF that I email to the parents or by making a copy of it myself, writing what I want along the bottom, and then mailing it to them or dropping it off. As I gave the assessment, I asked the students to hold up the paper. Yes. For example, when we were doing words, they yes. showed me the Number words one. And sentences paper. When we were doing sounds, I had the student hold up the sounds assessment sheet. And on each line, the students would write the letter or letters that make that sound. You have your pencil okay. in your hand, right? You have your paper. You can tell your students to make a smiley face or a star or something in place if they're not sure of a sound. For example, if number five is the sound ch and they're unsure what letter or letters make the ch sound, they can put a smiley face there and then move, along, move on with us as we move on. Miss Beaner, I still mm -hmm. haven't did it. Okay, go ahead and do it. If you don't know how to do it, we'll skip it. We'll come back to it later, okay? 
You can also tell your students that they can tell you to repeat a sound. If they're unsure of the sound that you made, they can ask you to repeat the sound that you made. I need to hear it again. Okay, look at me. And it's, I always find it's helpful to point to my mouth and say, eyes on me, because when I do that, then my students are watching my mouth as I make the sound. Eyes on me. <gasps> ah. And it really is helpful for them to have their eyes on you when you're making the sound so that they can see what your mouth is doing as you're making the sound so that they don't confuse different sounds. Eyes on me. What? Look at my mouth. D. 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 So they can hear you distinguish between sounds like b or d or m or n. And number 10, you know two ways to spell this sound. Watch my mouth, ready? So you're gonna write them on the number 10 line, both the ways. You can give this assessment one-to-one -one, or you could be in a small group and give the assessment or in your whole group, in your whole class. Uh, the sounds assessment, the word and sentence assessment can be given that way. Number one, Hello. yet. I did not go to the store yet. Yet. You want to be Kaylin? Yet. Yet. Not get. Yet. Yet. Your student would have in front of them the student assessment sheet, words, and sentences. And as the teacher, you would say, eyes on me. And they would look at your mouth and you'd say, yet. And then they would go ahead and write, yet on their paper at home. You would not have something like this projected because it's an assessment. Quit. Even when things are hard, we must not quit. It. And then for number two, if you say a word like chap, and they say, I'm unsure how to spell it, or if they know they're unsure how to spell it and they want to skip it, they can just put a check mark or they can put a smiley face, whatever works for them. When you're thinking about the reading assessment, you're going to want to give that one to one. For the teachers who have all their students in a video conference, you can still do one to one by varying up your word list so that it's not the same word list over and over again so that student 10 has seen that same list and heard other students read it you can manipulate your lists and make them use the same words, but move them in a different order. And then here I have a third copy of the same words mixed around. For example, I have this word list. And with the same words, I have this level one initial word list that I move the words around still having the nonsense word. If you have 20 students on and you're afraid that you won't have reliable results because so many of the students are eyeballing this list before it's their turn to read it, you can also use different words that are similar. For example, instead of using the word ran, you can use the word run. Um, instead of using the word she, you can use the word he. As long as all of the words that you're using include the same concepts, then you can use any words. And you can find extra words in Interactive OG, and you can also find extra words in Recipe for Reading that go along with the concept and are cumulative. You can also have a red word list mixed up so that the students are not seeing the same words in the same order. When having the students read the word list, I have all of the students mute themselves. I usually ask them to do a different activity uh, like a writing activity or a drawing activity, while that particular student that I've asked to unmute is reading the word list. Mm. She. And then down at the bottom, where there's room for sentences, you can dictate a sentence to the student like, the lid is so hot. 
and then the student would write the lid is so hot. Again, you wouldn't be providing the sentence for the student. They would just be doing it on their paper. And then you could do another sentence as well. This is your initial assessment. This will take a long time. It'll take over the course of a couple of days and you can spread it out as much as you need because they're new to the process. But when this is your midterm or final, they might move quicker through it because they, you've taught them the concepts and they have familiarity with this process or this procedure of writing sounds, maybe in the sand tray, as well as um, writing words and sentences during word and sentence dictation. But depending on where they are in the process, whether they've ever been taught using um, IMSEs or in Gillingham, or they have not, the amount of time that this assessment takes will vary. Also, their level, their ability, um, their attention span. To that point, you can include less sounds, you can include less words, uh, maybe one sentence instead of two, and you can differentiate this assessment as needed. As always, we are here to help. So visit us at imsc.com to find IMSE journal articles, lesson planning tools, and if you scroll down to the bottom, you also can visit our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest pages for different lesson planning templates, ideas, and activities.